Hello and welcome to my review of the HBI Savage XSSS kit. So this is the one that you put together yourself and it is the small one, not the larger one. Now these are some aftermarket tires that I got. These are Big Joe 2's by Proline, but it comes with these tires. So these are a nice replica of the um, full-size Savage. Unfortunately the compound is a little bit hard, but I'll get back to that later. This truck comes with a clear body shell, which I did up in a blue and white scheme with the help of my girlfriend. She's very good with paint. Um, I also have the um, RTR body, which is this one. It's also a nice look, and I just use this one to bash more. Alright, the truck itself. What is typical about this thing is that it has a twin vertical plate design, which means you have these two plates here which in between all of the electronics and the transmission are squished. On the full size, these are aluminum on these, this one. It's plastic, but it's very sturdy plastic. You can see it has a waterproof receiver box. This is your player speed control is mounted. And this is where your motor is. And what is nice about this truck is that it runs 110 scale electronics, while this thing itself is 112 scale. So that's good for temps, etc. Another nice thing is that the kit comes with aluminum shocks where the RTR comes with plastic shocks. They're very plush, but are a little bit over dampened. You see another upgrade that I did is the T-bone bumper. It does not come with that. It only has this bumper stock. It has, it also has adjustable camber links and it has CBDs instead of dog bones, which is the case for the RTR version. It has plastic shock towers, which are nice and beefy. Um, this is the battery compartment. It only has one battery compartment, contrary to the larger one. This fits um, normal, normal size 2S batteries and smaller 3S batteries. It comes with a front and a rear diff and in the middle you see the transmission which works with a slipper clutch. Alright, let's have a look at some driving footage. Here you'll see some relatively dark footage of it driving all over these, but it should give you an idea of how that car handles me. Uh, that was with the Traxxas Talon tires, by the way. Here it is doing my infamous bend test, so it should give you an idea of its handling. And it handles quite well, actually. It has a relatively low center of gravity, and I'd say that it actually handles better than the large-scale nice flux version. Um, it's very easy to get wheelies with this truck because of the big tires, uh, the slipper clutch, and the short wheelbase. People have reported that they've been able to yeah, get standing exactly back, clips. back I have not, not on 2S or on 3S. That could have to do with my tires, though, um, because of the grip and the fact that I tape them. That really does not help. That's kind of cool. Here it is driving around on some grass, which again, it handles uh, great with the big tires. All right, let's talk about fun a little bit. So it's a truck yeah. with a lot of density. It has relatively um, a lot of weight um, compared to its size. So it sometimes kind of feels like you're just driving around a rock, if that makes any sense. But it's fun, you know, it's a small action-packed monster truck. It has, um, it has low, uh, it doesn't have a lot of suspension travel, but it still handles pretty rough terrain quite well. You can get it, you can set it up to go quite fast um, and it handles those speeds really well. And of course, uh, who doesn't like wheelies and uh, backflips off of jumps, which it is very good at. All right, I'd like to discuss some durability issues that I've had. I have um, stripped out a hex in one of my wheels that was on 3S, on 2S I haven't had that issue. Uh, I stripped both my front and rear diff and that has to do with um, the fact that it's not shimmed correctly out of the box. So I'd shim it a little bit tighter than they say in the manual and ever since I haven't had any problems with it. I wore out my transmission outdrive cups. Um, there is a hardened upgrade for that which takes care of that. And in some of my setups my motor did run a little bit hot. That is because um, you see me taking temps here. I got about 60 here. And that is because the motor is shielded from air flowing over it, so you should pay attention to your gearing and the KV rating and the voltage. Here it is with the Talon tires, by the way. Alright, um, after this you'll see some on-road footage, see how it runs there. You can see the wheelies that I'm getting. 
let's talk about jumping and we'll see some jumps after this. It's actually a very good jumper. It flies perfectly level and it responds very well to throttle inputs because of those big wheels and the slipper clutch. All right, it's, yeah, here, here you can see, it's pretty easy to land these jumps quite nicely. Working on this truck is a bit tough, I have to say. It's a pretty complex design. That's true for a lot of minis, so I'm not really going to hold it against it. Let's have a look at some crashes, by the way. This will illustrate what I said about durability. It is very good on impacts. The other issues that I mentioned didn't really have to do anything with impacts, uh, and I wasn't able to break it by crashing into something. Um, yeah, so, but working on it is tough. I never really look forward to it. Once I get into it, it's really not as bad as I imagine generally, but that's just not one of the advantages of this truck. The build was easy enough. I really didn't have any issues. Um, one recommendation is to get some good hex driver so you don't strip out the hexes on this truck. Ooh, that was a nasty Ooh. hit. All right, there's quite a bit of sun in my face, but let's just ignore that. Yeah, so would I buy it again and how does it compare to other trucks? Um, for a Mini, yes I would. To be honest, I don't think that there's a lot of really great options for Minis out there, especially in terms of working on the truck and in terms of durability. I have heard of the LC Racing ones are very good, but I've never owned those. Um, I think the kit, especially, I think I got it for 180 bucks. That's a pretty good value, especially if you have some electronics for it already and you get electronics relatively cheap these days. Um, and especially on impacts, it's very durable, uh, more durable than any other Mini that I've had. Um, and it looks nice and it fits in your backpack. So I'd say yes. If I were to be looking for a Mini, I would definitely consider this one again. All right, first truck I'm going to compare it to is the Mini E-Revo. I did have that truck. That was my first truck. I did sell that one. I would say that I like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to work on. They're both hard to work on. This one's a little bit easier. Um, and what I didn't like about the Mini E-Revo is that it flips relatively easily, um, which is funny because the large-scale E-Revo actually does not flip easy and has good handling characteristics. And with this one, it's the other way around. It handles better than its big brother. Um, I also think it looks a little bit better. The aftermarket support for the um, Mini Revo is a bit better, of course, but uh, this thing also has quite some aftermarket support. And in terms of price, I think this is a little bit more expensive. Um, I like the fact they can get this as a kit, which is not true for the Mini Revo. Um, another one I want to compare to is this one. This is the Nitro Circus Mini. It's definitely smaller, as you can see, but it is three times cheaper. And this one runs 4S, where this one runs 2 or 3S, um, which is an advantage in that it's very efficient. The torque does some put some extra strain on the outdrives, etc. So that's a bit of a negative. And this wins in part support hand down. HPI in Europe especially is very easy to get. Nice Circus, uh, Basher, you have to go to Hobby King and you just have to hope that they have stuff in scope. So that's a big negative. So if that weren't the case, I would have picked this one because this is a very fun truck to drive and the value would have been insane. But because the part support is always a bit iffy and um, the gears are plastic, which do grind up when stones get in there, and this one has metal gears and a completely closed transmission. I'm gonna say that I just barely prefer my Savage XS. All right, another truck I'd like to compare to is the Stampede. This is the Stampede two-wheel drive. Um, I think its main competitor is actually Stampede four-wheel drive, but I don't have that one. But you can see the, um, the difference in size. So Stampede's definitely a bigger truck. Um, but they're about the same price range. The size isn't that much bigger on the Stampede. It's a bit higher due to the uh, suspension travel. I would get the Stampede. Stampedes are very easy to work on, to and the four-wheel drive version. They have better, they have more suspension travel, so they'll go over more stuff. Uh, their part support and third-party aftermarket support is even better than the Savage XS. 
Uh, and in terms of fun, probably because of the ground clearance, the Stampede wins a little bit. It uh, and it has the wheelies and everything. And I think, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but you get more for your money as well. And this is in terms of the kit version and the RTR. All right, that's, so that was my final review of the Savage Access. I hope that was useful for you. Um, overall, good mini truck. But I would say that if you don't like working on complex trucks, you should look at some bigger skills like the 110 skills or even the 1.8 skills, which can get pretty cheap these days.